what finite crime could justify an eternity of punishment? Off repeated question by the atheist is actually a fairly good one. What possible finite crime that a human being could commit, even Adolf Hitler, that could possibly justify an eternity of torment, assuming that at least some people are headed for destruction that is everlasting, that they're potentially headed for a lake of fire, as described in the book of Revelation, burns forever. Now, there's one problem with the question as posed, and keep in mind if you're an atheist, I'm kind of with you on this one, all right? Yeah, I'm on your side sometimes. Not all the times when you're eating kids, I'm, I'm opposed to that, I think that's immoral. Yeah, when you eat children, I don't think that's right. It's something you guys do a lot, and I think that's the wrong thing to do, that's the wrong way to act. But in this particular instance, uh, when I first be became a Christian, I wrestled with that a lot. And actually me and one of my friends who was a Christian, we, we used to talk about that all the time. And we were like, even Adolf Hitler, how could it possibly be that anybody on earth could, could, it could be just in any situation for somebody being sentenced to hell forever? Even Adolf Hitler, how could that possibly be justified? And I used to wrestle with it. Now, I stopped wrestling with it a long time ago. There is a certain command in the scriptures and it calls, goes, trust the Lord with all your heart and cling not to your own understanding. And somewhere along the line, I stopped, I stopped wrestling with it. I just had peace about it. Um, it's never really been fully answered for me. A lot of Christians think they have the absolute answer, but a matter of fact, you could interpret the scriptures three or four different ways. It's hard to actually, it's hard to actually know for a fact Till you stand before the Lord and you go, oh, those guys are burned. Oh, those are the ones who get sentenced to hell. Then, then you won't know. You won't know until you're, until you're standing there. But, just for argument's sake, what finite crime, just so we're clear, there's potentially not necessarily such a thing as a finite crime. It depends on what crime you are talking about. Or let's just take, for example, the crime of murder. Somebody murders your child. That is not a finite crime. Because you are killing the child and you are killing all the potential of the child. You are murdering, in fact, everything that child was designed to be. Everything. Everything that, ch all the possibilities of that life. That was one way of thinking of, uh, thinking of the Holocaust. And if you think of that way, it'll freaking boggle your mind with the infinity of loss. Entire population sensors were wiped out. Not only are you killing those people, but you're potentially killing the next scientist who discovered the cure for cancer. You're potentially killing the next great violinist. You're potentially killing the next great artist. Who knows what, in fact, you were destroying. If you murder someone, it's not necessarily a finite crime. The consequences of that action could reverberate far into eternity, and that could be true of almost any crime you can think of. Now, obviously, there are some crimes that, you know, are finite. But there are some crimes that are bad enough that they could possibly reverberate into eternity because they have consequences that far outlast the moment and far outlast the lifetime. And you have no way of knowing for sure which, which crimes are those and which crimes are not. Yeah, with the minor crimes like stealing, I don't know, whatever it is you steal. Whatever, stop stealing. <laughs> whatever you're stealing, it's probably not that big of a deal. But when you start talking about murder, well, it's not necessarily finite. It is potentially a very, very, very big deal. Now, I'm of the mind, there are a bunch of schools of thought on this as to who, who gets sentenced to hell and why. Keep in mind, if you don't know this, that there is something called universalism, and it is backed up by scripture. Almost all of the different theories you hear about who gets thrown, to, who gets sentenced to hell and why, are almost always come out of the Bible to one degree or another. They are backed up by the actual word of God. That's why it's impossible to say for certain, with any relative certainty. There is such a thing as universalism, that Jesus paid the price for everybody. Jesus went to the cross and said, it is finished, and his sacrifice on the cross is good, paid the, the price for all mankind. Backed up by the scripture. God has given all men over to disobedience so that he might have mercy on them all. Boom. Wow, I would, I would love if that were true.
if it means that Adolf Hitler gets to not be sentenced to hell, but, you know, Joe the Atheist, who's a cool guy, also doesn't go, I'm for it. But, to be perfectly honest, I just don't think that that's actually how it all goes down. My own per personal belief, and take this with the grain of salt, because I don't know any better than anybody else, but this is just my own personal belief, that there are real evil people out there in the world, and those real evil people are going to pay the price. And they are going to pay forever. And that price is intense, and it is forever, and it's from everlasting to ever everlasting. But I don't think that punishment is reserved for just your average kind of schmo who's just kind of a jerk, but also kind of a good person, kind of... Most people are in the middle. Most people are muddling around, kind of immoral, kind of skanks, but also kind of decent-hearted human beings, to one degree or another, you know, deserving of mercy. That's the message of the thief on the cross. That mercy can be extended to you right up to the minute you expire. The thief on the cross had lived a whole life of immorality. I imagine he's a thief and he's being executed for his thievery, so he's way worse than any atheist. You know, I don't know if there were any atheists back then, but <laughs> I doubt they were all that troubling, you know. Like, oh, I don't believe in God. You don't have any evidence for that? Who cares, you know? Who cares? It's not that big of a deal. Is it worth an eternity of punishment? No, probably not. Maybe there are some exceptions, there's, you know, but, like I said, I'm not God. Can't imagine that God would want to sentence somebody to an everlasting destruction for something as silly as that. And the thief on the cross, the message is crystal clear. You can repent right up to the moment you're about to kick. You can go, I, I, I'm sorry, and I accept you, and I'd rather be in heaven than hell. And it looks to me like he'll say to you, this day you will be in paradise, and that's that. Now, atheists love to distort this and say, well, then Adolf Hitler is going to repent right before he dies, and then the poor atheist is going to burn in hell. That's a silly way of processing it. If, in fact, God is omnipotent, and if, in fact, God is omniscient, and if, in fact, he loves you as I tell you, he more than likely does unless you're a really, really, really scuzzy jerk. Then you got to assume for argument's sake that it's going to be covered somehow. Is in a debate with this one Mr. Robert Reed. Really, really good guy, honestly. <laughs> Nothing wrong with him, you know. And he was telling me that he's going to... You know, he's, he's going to get hit by a car tomorrow and die as an atheist and burn in hell. I just don't think it works that way. Assuming God is omnipotent, assuming God is omniscient, that he foresaw the moment of Robert Reed's, you know, the moment where Robert Reed is about to die. And it's really easy for God to just sovereignly introduce himself four or five minutes before you, before you meet him face to face and meet you face to face. Do I have any proof of this? No. Does it make sense to me? Yeah, it makes absolute sense to me. Might there be eternal consequences for things that you say and do on this earth, and you might have unbelievable sorrow and anguish over the things that you did in this body, even if you don't wind up in, in eternally destroyed, if you don't wind up in hell? Yes, absolutely. 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 Crystal clear on that, the importance of living correctly in the here and now. And that's a good message whether you believe in eternal damnation or not. It is far, far wiser and more superior. Let's throw out Pascal's wager and let's make a new wager. It is far better to live as a decent, kind-hearted, loving, compassionate human being every single solitary day of your life. It is much wiser and smarter to do that. You are banking something against eternity in my book, but you are doing something really good and positive for yourself and for your life and for the people around you in your book too. And any way you cut the mustard, that is a better way to live. So, if you want to stay a non-believer, stay a non-believer. But internalize some of the more positive messages of Christianity and let's all try and activate our faith in that regard at least. Be a little bit more merciful. Be a little bit more compassionate with one another. Be a little bit kinder. And any way you cut the mustard, you're going to have a better time of things. When you stand before God, you won't have to be ashamed of yourself at all.
even if you were an evil atheist eating little children all the time. Stop eating the kids. That, that part, <laughs> that part's just plain wrong. I mean, it's wrong. It really is. You know, I don't know. You guys are always chomping. Uh, whatever. Okay, I'm in.